Okay, uh, so welcome to this month's webinar, which is weight loss. We're looking at weight loss, we're looking at supporting service users to avoid weight loss and to maintain a healthy weight. Um, so some of you I na names I recognise there, so welcome back, uh, people that have attended before. And to any new people that are joining, welcome. Uh, my name's Lucy Caldwell and I'm a registered nurse and uh, my role at CareBeans is as a nurse advisor. Um, and so I kind of do these webinars, I help with the training and help with sort of ongoing support really. So as I said, this session will be recorded. So just so that you're aware, I will mute you all, but do feel free to unmute yourselves if you've got a question, but we will also have a question and answer session at the end. So if you do have anything, either ask at the time or just make a little note and then do ask me at the end and we can go through any queries that you might have. Okay. So we're going to be covering over the next half hour or so before we then go into the system and have a look around there and then have some questions and answers. We're going to be looking at supporting service users to maintain a healthy weight. Uh, we're going to be looking at weight loss, why that might be, what, what to look out for. And we're going to be looking at care planning to support the people in the service. So losing weight, why do we lose weight? So often as we get older, and this webinar is kind of geared towards the older people today. Um, but as we get older, we do start to lose weight. We can, it's very common that uh, as you get older, you people start to lose weight. It could, could be due to illness, um, could just be due, due to loss of appetite for, for a variety of different reasons, uh, but it is quite common for people to lose weight as they get older. So it's important to maintain a healthy weight and the steps that you can take to gain a healthy weight or to maintain a healthy weight, which we can go through. Uh, as I said, weight loss is quite common. Um, in older people especially. So even if there's nothing wrong with the health, it could be common for older people to lose their appetite, as we said before. Um, so they also might be losing weight because they're not just not eating enough. Um, and maybe their diet doesn't give them enough energy or calories. <clears throat> so just the things to be mindful of uh, when you're looking at why someone might be losing weight. Let me just try and get rid of that there. Sorry, I wanted to go with that little bar at the top. Um, OK, and then, of course, obviously, if someone loses weight very quickly or you're really concerned about that person, always the best case, uh, the best thing to do is to contact the GP for advice. Um, because obviously, if there is a uh, underlying medical cause for the weight loss, they need to um, work that out, assess that person, diagnose it and treat them appropriately. So if you are ever unsure, do contact the GP as with everything, if you're concerned. So being underweight can be serious. So losing weight and becoming underweight is a serious issue. Um, and it's a special issue, uh, an issue for older people, can be serious for older people. They can become very poorly very quickly. So it increases the risk of health problems. So, for example, their bones might be affected. They might be more prone to bone fractures if they fall. Uh, being underweight can weaken the immune system. Of course, then you're more susceptible to illness and infection. Um, and being underweight potentially could increase the risk of you not getting enough nutrients because you're not eating enough. So you're not eating the right things and you're potentially not getting your the vitamins and minerals that you need in your daily diet. So things to look out for. Uh, signs that one of your service users might be losing weight. They might experience some of the following symptoms, uh, signs and symptoms. So loss of appetite, of course, as we've said. Uh, you may find that clothes become loose or um, things like jewellery, for example, or rings, um, they might become loose. So it might be sort of obvious that that person is sort of getting thinner, losing weight. Uh, and also dentures, they can often become loose as the person loses weight. Um, so if the dentures are kind of rattling around and didn't, doesn't, don't fit as well as they did, that could be a sign uh, that someone is losing weight. If people are tired all the time, I think we're all tired all the time, aren't we? But if, if people are tired all the time and suddenly become very lethargic, um, that could be due to loss of energy uh, and just not eating enough. And then if they've got reduced mobility, uh, reduced ability to perform normal tasks, that could that could be a sign as well. So look at some more. So reduced physical performance. So perhaps if someone can't walk as far as normal or as fast as normal, that could be a symptom that's that they're sort of fatiguing e easily, um, possibly meaning that they're losing weight. If someone's got an altered mood, uh, if someone's malnourished, that can be associated with lethargy and with depression as well. Um, 
poor concentration so people might not be able to concentrate as well as they could and also swallowing difficulties if someone's coughing or choking for example when they're eating and drinking that could be the sign of a swallowing difficulty which would then in turn mean that they're potentially not swallowing enough not eating enough food you know not having enough intake um obviously if that is a thing that you're concerned about someone having swallowing difficulties and at risk of aspiration or you know things going into their lungs um then you must you know contact a, a medical team or someone to come and assess them so assessments wise and we've got these on the system as well and we can have a look at these afterwards um but there's lots of assessments that kind of assist with care planning and um i'll just go through those now I don't know if you've heard of the MUST tool. I would imagine a lot of you have heard of the MUST tool. So that's the Malnutrition Universal Screening Tool, uh, the MUST tool. It's produced by an organisation called BAPEN. Uh, so it's an evidence-based tool and it gives specific guidance um, depending on the score. So you answer the questions in there. I'll have a look at one shortly. It gives you a score and then gives you some guidance as to what to do. So possibly things like weigh them monthly or arrange some goals for, with that person or, or whatever it will, will tell you. It will tell you those, the specific guidance that you need to do and incorporate into your uh, care plan for that person. There's also um, a, an alternative measurement that is um, provided by BAPEN. That's also on the system. I'll show you that as well. It's called the nutritional risk using the mid upper arm circumference. So you may or may not have heard of that, but this is if you can't weigh somebody, the muscle tool relies on having someone's weight and height so that you can record the BMI or so that the system will work out the BMI for you. Now, sometimes you might not be able to take someone's weight for whatever reason. They might not be able to get out of bed or whatever reason it is, they might not be able to be weighed. Um, so therefore, the must can't be used uh, because you can't get a weight. So rather than then do nothing, you can use the... Uh, MUAC, it's sometimes called mid upper arm circumference, the MUAC tool um, to help you build up a picture of that person. So help you with an assessment and a judgment of that person. Um, so I'll show you that as well, because that's like the alternative if you can't do the must tool. Mouth care assessment and records. We've got mouth care assessments on the system as well. Um, obviously, a healthy mouth means that it's comfortable for someone to eat. So that's important. If someone's got a poorly mouth, a, a, a painful mouth, ulcerations or dents not fitting properly or, um, you know, poor sort of oral health, then that's not comfortable for eating. So people are going to be put off eating if that's how they're feeling. Um, there's well-being assessments on the system as well. So general well-being can affect appetite. If people are feeling a bit low, they might not want to eat. Uh, so we've also got depression scales as well, for those with or without dementia or, or a cognitive uh, impairment. So um, just be mindful that they're on the system and you can use any of those that you need to for your service user. I'm just going to mute everyone, just to make sure that was muted. There we go. Let's just mute it. Thank you. Okay. So eating and drinking care plan, right, before we've gone on to the system and we've looked at the care plans, which I'm going to do as well, but I just thought I would also um, go through the three areas of the care plan on, on the slides as well and um, just give you lots of suggestions for the support um, that you might want to offer your service users. Um, and like I say, you'll get these slides afterwards, so you know, feel free to use them um, if you need to or to sort of take prompts from them or what have you, as long as it's obviously appropriate for that service user. So when we're looking at eating and drinking care plans, the first section, as we know, we are care plans, but for those of you that are customers that know our care plans, you know there's three sections. So we've got what, what are the needs or the concerns, what are the issues? Uh, the second thing we've got is what are the goals or, or the intended expected outcomes? And the third area is what support are we going to give that person? What support do they require? What do they want to for us to give to help them reach those goals. So those three sections, need, goal, support. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be looking at now. So in so first of all, you need to identify what the, what the needs are, what are the concerns, why are, they, why are they losing weight or why might they potentially lose weight or be at risk of it? Um, and there could be a number of reasons and obviously you'd go into more detail than this, but I've just put some prompts down here. It could be sort of due to mental health or poor mental health, meaning reduction in appetite or what they're eating. 
um, forgetting to eat. It could be that someone with dementia or a cognitive impairment just doesn't think to eat, um, sort of forgets to eat and drink. Uh, could be that they have uh, infections of some sort, reducing their appetite. It might be on certain medications that reduce their appetite or make them nauseous. Um, depression, as we said before, that can affect people's appetite. Full fitting dentures and oral health. So it's just, it's identifying, there might be multi reason, multi factors, you know, as to why that person is either losing weight or at risk of. So it's just important to look at all those different aspects. Oh, I've just discovered you could press the space bar and do that, somebody. Right. And then you're looking at goals. So where does that person want to be? What do they want their outcomes to be? I mean, I've just put two sort of fairly obvious ones here. Um, but of course, that person might have lots of different goals. But I would think in general, the goal is to maintain a healthy weight and to become well nourished as well. So eating the right foods to remain healthy and uh, and a healthy weight. So, so not overweight, not going the other way. And then we've got a few slides now just looking at support. So in the support section of your care plan, this is where you can sort of really um, create a you know, nice robust care plan with lots of support that you put in place to help them maintain a good weight or put on weight or, or maintain that weight. So firstly, um, support you could put in place is, is certain referrals. So if someone uh, it needs it, they might need a referral to the speech and language therapist. Um, and uh, they might assess their swallowing or, or all sorts of different things, but they can uh, they might be people that need to see that service user to advise on, on you know, what, what plan of action should be taken. And also dietitians, of course, and GP. So referrals as necessary if you feel they need to be made to get seen by professional. Must all, as we said before, so the must all or the alternative that will um, help you build up a picture of that person's needs and give them a risk level. Uh, snacks, so offering snacks throughout the day, so not just the three main meals, but also snacks throughout the day. Um, they don't have to be sugary snacks, you know, there can be lots of different types of snacks. You can see some lovely, delicious looking snacks here on the right. Um, so, yeah, just it's just about offering those often. High calorie foods as well. So high calorie options when they're thinking when we're thinking about what they uh, would like to eat you know you can always offer the high calorie options milky drinks for example and all that sort of thing and little and often um that's often better than one big meal if, if someone hasn't got a good appetite or they perhaps feel a bit nauseous or they're not eating brilliantly then to offer them one big meal could be quite overwhelming almost could make them feel sort of even worse so little and often is is often better um to get more nutrients in often better than one big meal and of course having things the correct consistency so if they have been seen by speech and language who've suggested that they need like pureed diet or thickened fluids or what have you it's just making sure that, that food is the correct consistency in line with their advice you know if you've got a modified diet for example so just looking at the continuation of support so support at meal times um, so especially if the service user isn't able to feed themselves well or, or maybe forgets to eat, it's about being with that person and prompting them and supporting them at meal times. A varied diet is important, so offering people a varied diet uh, that takes into account all their preferences, things they like, things they don't like, um, so all their sort of food choices, and then also cultural requirements as well. So if there's sort of, um, a specific diet that they need to follow due to uh, cultural requirements, religious requirements, and it's just ensuring that those are respected too and included in the support plan. So it's very clear what um, that person might be able to, might not be able to eat, for example. Glasses, hearing aids and dentures. So it's important that they're all properly in place before people start to eat. Uh, otherwise it can be very disorientating if not, if someone, especially if someone is prone to confusion, just making sure glasses are nice and clean so they can see what they're eating. They've got the hearing aids in so things can be explained to them. And like we said before, dentures are, are fitting well and in place so that that person can chew their food properly. Good oral hygiene, you can put that in your support plan as well as a part of the support you offer. So just ensuring that, that person maintains good oral hygiene, whether that means you helping them or prompting them or guiding them to where their toothbrush is or helping them soak their dentures or whatever that might be um, and assessing them frequently. Positioning. So with positioning, we mean that's making sure that they're in a, 
at right position. So supported when they're sitting up uh, and in a comfortable position for eating and drinking rather than sort of slouching over. It might be uncomfortable to eat that way. It's just making sure people are sat up properly and not slouching if they need support to do so. And also offering flexible meal times. I know it's not always um, a realistic thing to be able to do um, in the busyness of the service, but it, it, where possible, you should be flexible with meals and meal times because you know if someone doesn't necessarily want to eat at the times other people generally eat. Then you know it's about thinking about whether you can offer flexible meal times for that person if it's going to help them maintain weight. So here we've got some more support. So explaining. So if the person needs support with feeding, it's just about making sure that you explain, for example, how you're going to help them, how you're going to support them, what the food is that they're seeing on their plate, um, especially if they're sort of prone to confusion. Encouragement, so offering encouragement and support to eat. Promoting independence. So this is an important one. And um, it's not, you know, you don't just want to, if someone needs support eating and drinking, you don't just want to feed them immediately. You would want to help them be as independent as possible. So if that, that person might just need help um, holding the spoon, for example, even if you're helping them to load it, you know, it might you might be able to give them the spoon. They might be able to take the spoon themselves. It's just about promoting independence and dignity and not automatically doing it for them, you know. Um, Environment wise, it's nice to have a pleasant environment in which to eat meals. As you can see over here, my little picture over here. Um, so a nice pleasant environment to eat your meals. Uh, that's what will encourage um, sort of people to eat and drink in a sort of nice environment. And also being with someone. So being with someone at mealtimes might help improve their appetite. Uh, it needs to be a, it needs to be enjoyable. It's a social activity eating. Uh, it's not just about getting nutrients into you. So um, that's quite nice if um, you can make it sort of an enjoyable, enjoyable experience for those. So it's about thinking about how you might set that up and including that in your care plans. We have some more support here. So adapted cutlery uh, or equipment. So it's just about making sure any special eating and drinking equipment is available uh, that might be needed that's used at mealtime. So like specialist cups, you can get things like stay warm plates for someone that might take a long time to eat. Um, you know, different types of adapted cutlery, just about making sure they're all available for that person if it's been advised that they should be using those. Uh, plain coloured crockery and tablecloths are important, especially for people with dementia or visual problems. Um, it's thing, and it's also about thing, it's about contrast when we're talking about plain coloured crockery and tablecloths. It's about contrast. So it's about contrasting well with the food on the plate so it's easy to see. Um, so, firstly, I mean, here you'll see on the right they've got white crockery on a red tablecloth so it's very easy there to see the plates you could even choose plates with kind of a rim you see around there like a, 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 a rim round it for example you know so it's just a bit, a bit of it's about contrast it's about seeing it nice and easily um so that's something to think about and also if you can imagine the food on the plate if it was this white plate as opposed to food on the plate if it was a heavily patterned plate it could be difficult to see what it is if you have a visual impairment or uh, some type of confusion uh, so it's just about thinking in that way really for when you're uh supporting someone at meal time so if you can imagine it's a, a bit a very patterned plate on a very patterned tablecloth that could look quite overwhelming um and wouldn't be sort of clear what it was certainly wouldn't be conducive to sitting down and eating a nice meal um, and also removing table decorations, so not having too much fuss, keeping it sort of clutter free, distraction free. Eating in a calm setting is a sort of nicer experience. And then, of course, offering appetizing meals. So food should look and smell appealing. Uh, I was saying on Tuesday, whether I actually I've been the day before down to a nursing home to do some training and the smell of the lunch was absolutely gorgeous. And then I got some lunch. They gave me some lunch. It was delicious. It was a beef stew. Mashed potato, it was absolutely gorgeous, but it was so nice. It was such a nice environment um, in this nursing home and all the um, service users' partners had come in and they were helping them to eat. And it was just a really nice, pleasant environment. And people were in there for a long time, taking their time. It was, it was just really nice. Um, so it's just about making everything nice and appetising and appealing for that person. And then also offer small portions if someone it does find a large plate of food off-putting. 
So continuing with the support, plenty of eating time. Um, so you might need to reheat the food if necessary to maintain the meal's appeal. So, you know, you can do that, do that um, if appropriate. One course at a time. So again, avoiding confusion, just serve one course at a time rather than all the courses, not knowing where to start. Uh, avoid clearing the table before the meal has finished. So it might be that the person's quite slow to eat. Everyone else has finished. It might be very tempting to start clearing the tables, but that could put a pressure on that person who might just... Uh, sort of stop eating and think they're being a bit of a nuisance so it's just about avoid doing that and, and giving them the time and space that they need to finish their meal and then oral nutrition supplements so ons you'll often see that referred to um so if they're prescribed by the dietitian then you can you need to make sure you incorporate those into the meals as well okay so that's the support. Um, once you've done your care plan, you, there's a variety of risk assessments that you can do if you wanted to. There's blank risk assessment forms. So you might have identified risks as you've done your care plan. You might have thought this person's at risk of choking or difficulty swallowing, or they are quite at high risk of malnourishment. So you can always put a risk assessment in place as well, go one step further and look at you know, how you're going, what, what the risk is and sort of how you're going to manage that. Give it a risk level. So actions wise, for customers, so for customers that are on this um, webinar, you will recognize what I mean here by actions. So when you put your care plans in place, we've just been talking about the care plan then. Once you put that in place, um, you can create actions. So that means the day-to-day -day things that you would like the staff to do, carers to do, or the nurses to do. Um, so for example, I've put an eating and drinking care plan in place for Sally Webb. So I've put a couple of actions in place. I've just put them up here so that you can see. So this is Sally here. She's got a food chart. Oh, go back. She's got a food chart there. Got lots of information about here. I've put some care instructions here. So this is what I want the carers to know. I want her to eat little and often high calorie foods. This is what she prefers. Make sure she's got full access to the menu. Help her choose what she likes, promote independence, etc. etc. Okay, so I've put some care instructions in there. So it's nice and detailed and person-centered. Uh, and then I've put a food chart in place so we can choose what she's eaten. We can sort of give a rough idea of how much she's eaten. That goes through to reports and you can put your note in there and save it. I've also put a weight in there. So this is a monthly weight. So this will flash up monthly if it's not been done. So where you can just record her weight and record any notes in there as well. So there's a whole range of different actions that you can put in place to support that care plan, to evidence that you're supporting that care plan and to then be able to report on just to check to make sure everything's kind of going to plan and that person is meeting those goals that they've put in place. Okay, got mouth care charts on there as well. I didn't use that one as an example. I've just used the food chart and weight check on there, but there's mouth care chart that you can put in place. And there's a whole range of actions you can put in place should you want to. You can name the action anything you like. So what else can I do? On the system, which I'll show you shortly, there are alerts that you can put in place. So there's like, I'll just go back actually. Can you see these little symbols? I've put those in place and it's like an overview. If I tapped on that, obviously I can't because this is a slide, but if I tapped on this, I'd see some information behind it. So the carers can do that on the devices or I can click onto it with my mouse. But that's a nice thought there. If I clicked on that, that would give me some, in, that would give me some, um, a piece of information about Sally and her dietary requirements, for example. So you can put these alerts in place. They're quite useful for a bit of an overview of that person. Um, obviously, you can put up reports um, on all the actions that you've put in place. So you can have a look at a month's worth of food charts, how much you've been eating over the last month. You can have a look at 12 months of weights and look at a graph and see what that's been doing. You can get alerted if that person, say, loses more than five kilograms, for example. You can get alerts put in place so you can really sort of tightly keep an eye on, on what's going on um, to make sure that they're sort of maintaining a good weight. And we also have analysis area reports. So when you set up the actions, and I'll show you this in a second, when you set up the actions, so I've, say for example, I've put three actions in place, I've put a food chart, I've put a fluid chart, I've put a weight chart, for example, all to do with eating and drinking. And I might put those under the analysis area of nutrition. So that means every month, for example, I can pull up uh, my analysis area of nutrition and I can see the reports for those three particular actions so it just helps me look at themed reports um, so that might be something that you might find quite useful I'll show you that 
uh, when we go onto the system. Okay, so let's do that now. Okay, so pop onto it now. So we've kind of gone through most of the care plan um, uh, with those slides, but uh, the content of them rather, or the suggestions for the content, but I will, you know, obviously also you'll get those as well. So you can have a look at all that information we talked about support wise. I'll just show you where that care plan sits as well. Okay. So if we go into Sally Webb, there we go. So Sally Webb. So she's got her eating and drinking care plan in place. I've done this for her already. Did it the other day. You can see the next review date. So it's all very clear what's happening when, what the status is. I've done a review summary. So she'd lost some weight when I last reviewed it. So I've just put that in there. Said that I'll change um, the care plan accordingly. So I've just briefly put what changes there are in there. And I've entered the changes down in this care plan. Um, but first of all, let's just have a quick look at the must tool. As part of my care plan, I've done a must tool for her. So here's my must tool. So I'm sure it's all familiar to a lot of you. So I've done a current weight, which is 68 kilograms. So height is 1.68 meters, and that's calculated a BMI for us. So when I come onto this must tool, it's already there. This information is already there. It's telling me she's a healthy weight, so that's good. She has lost weight, so we need to be mindful of that, but she's also a healthy weight, so I'm happy with that. That's good. Any unplanned weight loss? Yes, she has had six kilograms, so that's telling me that she's had 8.11% weight loss. If any of you have used um, the manual must tool before then you you know you'll probably recognize that table where you have to work out the percentage of weight loss uh, well this actually does it for you so you just put in what they've lost and then it will calculate that percentage for you rather than you go through that um table that, that, that's provided by bacon and then you can answer whether they're likely to eat in the next five days are they poorly are they likely to eat or not you can sort of put yes or no and save that assessment i can see here all my Previous assessments, if I hover over them, I can see she's been at high risk, which is down to medium risk. Her latest was at medium risk. I can click that eye to view all of my old assessments. So they're all sitting here. So when I come to view this next month, for example, I can have a look. I can see the latest. I can then conduct a review, turn it back into draft form and do another must tool so that I'm keeping on top of the thing. So that's where you would put your assessment. It's where you would also put that MUAC, but I'm gonna show you that on someone else in a second. Care plan wise. So remember I said there was those three areas. What are the concerns? What are the needs? That's here. What are the goals here? And how are we gonna assist them down here? Okay. So what are the concerns? So I've put, she forgets to eat, she's got dementia, she's had a chest infection, she's lost weight, she's been poorly, she's much better now, her appetite's increasing, but we need to keep an eye on her, she's been seen by a dietitian. So I've put some concerns and needs in there. I've put some goals in that I've decided with Sally. I've put her must score in there because it was medium risk. So what we need to do, we need to basically weigh her monthly, agree some goals with her, document her dietary intake small and frequent snacks so it's giving me some advice about what i need to do and then i've put some nice robust support plans in here for her um so you know at meal times make sure her food intake's recorded it's a nice sociable event for her uh eating and drinking uh she sometimes forgets so we need just to prompt and encourage her she might need help being shown where the dining room is Supported to maintain a healthy mouth. This is how we would do that. Sit her in an upright position. This is what she likes. This is what she doesn't like. Food wise, don't make her hurry her food. You know, so I've put all these things in place, like we've gone through on those slides, really, but I've just put a bit more detail in there. It's person centered to Sally, and I've discussed this with her. Okay. So that's my care plan. And then, of course, those actions that I said I'd put in place fluid chart, food chart, monthly weight, I add those here. So let's just have a quick look at how they look when I've put my actions in. So let's go into Sally. Here we go. So she's got lots of different things in place. So we've got a food chart there. So the carers simply click into the food chart. There you go. That's what I showed you on the slide. So we can say that she's had some lunch. We can say she's had a ham sandwich. 
on some devices as well you can use the microphone it'll transcribe it for you um you can put a rough idea of how much she's eaten there and save it if you're concerned you can share that with handover or you can share it to management as well uh so she had a flu fluid chart in there that's flashing because i want it to be encouraged every couple of hours so i'll put an alert on that so I'll simply put in oops how much she's drank what she's drank Okay, so they're the, they're the charts that are associated with eating and drinking. I've put a weight in for it, haven't I? I can override this at any time, but basically it's going to uh, tell me, it's going to start flashing on the 15th of August if I haven't done that. Okay, but just let's click on that and have a look at it. The weight chart, there we go. Got some instructions there, help her on the scales. You can put a weight in there, you can put any notes in there. Okay, so that's your sort of whole process really. So if I just pop back into that care plan because I just want to show you right we can access the actions this way or we can access them this way by the blue actions button so if I just quickly go on to this so this will make sense to the people that use the system already um you yes so this is the food chart for example so I can go and edit that if I want to I could put an alert on it if I decided to but this is where I fill out all those details that we've just seen all those care instructions etc so can you see here this is where it says do you want this do you want this to be part of an analysis report so i've put a whole range of analysis reports in the settings and reference data management page back end in my library i've put loads of different um analysis reports there so one of them is nutrition so i've put that for nutrition i want it to be part of that analysis area i've done the same with the weight going to the way i put that as part of the nutrition analysis area so that just means when i pull up that report i'll see those three different charts i'll have a look at what's going on with uh, those three different charts so it's just something you might want to think about uh, let's just go back to her main care plan page because i will also show you there you go yeah, that's those are the little alerts i was telling you about so if you're on the device you just tap it i'm on some laptop so i'll just click it with the mouse and it's got some background information there to do with eating and drinking okay so it might be that you put she's at risk of weight loss um now if i just show you this as well because this is a relatively new function so customers might not be aware of this function but it is quite useful conditions and alerts if you click into that this is where i put in place all those little symbols but if i scroll to the bottom because i've put a weight chart in for her that's fine, I can monitor the weights every month and I can have a look and compare them to the last quite easily. But I might want to go just one step further and be alerted to something as the manager. So this means I'll get alerted on the operations dashboard. So I might want to trigger an alert if her weight has changed by, I've put here five kilograms for Sally. So if she's lost five kilograms or more between readings, I need to know about it. That's what I've asked, that's what I've put in there. So. If, if you remember that must tool then she lost six kilograms so i was then notified about that because it was above five kilograms so you can always save that information you can come back and change it as required but it just means on the operations dashboard you'll get that flagged up in the alert section it will flag up to say she's lost weight and then management can sort of decide what they want to do about that change the care plan accordingly or what have you okay so what i'm going to do now just to finish off on um is i'm going to show you that middle prime circumference so let's say let's see if sarah's got one okay let's just pop into sarah's actions yeah she's got one here so a nutritional risk using middle prime circumference if she hadn't got one there i would just choose it from the list here and link it into an eating and drinking care plan so let's have a look at it so she's had a few of these done in the past we could view those if we wanted to so i'll just show you what i mean by this um so again this is a this is a this is a vapor tool so it's a it's a sort of official tool it's an official assessment it's not going to give you a definitive like the must tool you know you get a definite score with the must tool and you get guidance that you do that you you should do dependent on the score this doesn't give you a definite score but it helps you in your decision making about that person okay so it's it's uh it is a good tool to sort of help you evidence what you're seeing with that person so first of all you measure the mid upper arm circumference uh, and record that measurement in centimeters you re can record it in this table here 
You can always, go, if you Google must alternative measurements, that will take you to a little diagram showing you exactly what part to uh, measure. But basically, it's the fattest part of your upper arm, the biggest part of your upper arm. So it's your mid upper arm. So you're getting a tape measure and you're measuring round the biggest bit of your upper arm. OK, and then you've got that measurement in centimetres. Now, if you can have a look at these options, if it's below 23.5 centimetres, the BMI is likely to be 20 or less. So again, it doesn't give you an exact BMI because it doesn't know. But it's given as a likelihood. So if, it, if that measurement is less than 23 and a half centimetres, likely to be less than 20 BMI. If it's over 32 centimetres, it's likely to be over 30. So if it's neither of those, you don't have to choose one. But if it is one of those, you can click to pop that in that field. OK, it's, it's 22 centimetres, for example. So it's less than 23 and a half, so it's likely to be 20 or less, so BMI. And then you're looking at what your clinical impression is. So what's your impression of this person? There's a whole range of uh, statements that you can pick. One, two, three. So you might think she is obviously wasting. You can pick other ones if you want to. But you've got a little evidence box here where you can write further information. You can write lots of information in there. There's lots of characters for that. And then just thinking about unplanned weight loss, has to have their clothes or jewellery become loose? So we can say either yes or no, or we can put evidence of that. I've noticed that her rings have become loose, her belt's very loose, um, her dentures are not fitting well or whatever. Um, actually, no, that's probably not so much about dentures, that's more about clothes and jewellery, so you could just evidence that in there. Please select the appropriate statements regarding unplanned weight loss. So any of these that are appropriate, you can click. And if there's more than one, then you can do so and put your evidence in here. And then what about illness at the moment? Is she poorly and not likely to have intake for five days? Is she not likely to eat for five days? Or has she not eaten for five days? So you can pick the appropriate one there. So then you've gathered some assessment criteria. And what is your estimate on that? Do you think that her malnutrition risk is low, medium or high? So you can choose what you think it is dependent on what you found up here and what you've evidenced, okay? So you'd perhaps say it was medium. And then you can put some evidence in there. And if you then click onto that, you'll see the official guidance that they can give depending on what the score is. So if it's medium, you just simply click or the medium statements. Okay, and then you can add that sort of um, guidance to your care plan and save that assessment. So that's the mid upper arm circumference. Um, let's just have a quick look at the chat. Thank you once again for a great session. Oh, that's, you're welcome, Nicola, that's fine. Thanks, Nicola, that's very nice of you to say. Oh, that is nice, thanks for coming to it um, and I'll see you hopefully soon. Thanks, Nicola. Um, yeah, so that's your mid upper arm circumference. Uh, so that's where that sits in there. So it's either the must tool, but if you can't do the must tool, do the middle part to cover. That will give you an idea. So I hope that's helped. We've sort of come to the end now. We're on twenty to three. That's fine. So we're in good time. So we've got we've got a little bit of time now for any questions and answers. I mean, you might not have any, and that's fine. But if you do, please feel free to speak up. You can. Uh, you're obviously all muted, but if you unmute yourself, I think if you press the space bar, that unmutes you. Um, so feel free to do so, or you can pop something in the chat if you want. Um, do, do whatever is easiest for you. Uh, but I'll hang around for a little bit longer. <clears throat> if, if there's anyone here that uh, is new to these webinars, it's then thanks a lot for joining us. Um, it's nice to see new faces. You might be the existing customers, you might not be. If you wanted to have a little demo of the system, do feel free to call us. You can get hold of us on the uh, our website www.carebeans.co.uk one of my colleagues will happily give you a demo if you want one go through the care plans and things show you what the system does uh, for existing customers i hope that's helped with your care planning but it doesn't look like there are any questions oh yeah there might be Oh, good, Katrina. Oh, that's nice. You found the weight loss course very useful. And this is the second one you've attended. Brilliant. That's nice, Katrina. Nice to know. Um, yeah, I tried to theme them together this time. We had weight loss, obviously, today, or this week, rather. And then it was hydration last month and then nutrition the month before. So I sort of tried to put them all to, 
together sort of a bit themed um well thanks for that that's very nice very kind of you to say um let's have another look <coughs> I do want to look up some of the others. Don't want you to look at most of all two. Okay. Ah, right. I have two ladies. Right. I do want our oh, leather dementia. Both must score two. Ah, right. Okay. So if you have our, I don't know if you have our system, Katrina, but if you do have our system, you can do that must tool on it, which obviously will say it's the score two, which could be how you've got that score. Um, and on our system, you can actually pull through preset text, which pulls through the guidance of what you should do if it's a if it's a must score of two so it will tell you exactly what you need to do oh sorry i've got past it all as we use pcs system at double okay ah, so you use pcs okay yeah that's fine um yeah do pass it across to your carers knowledge is good knowledge is power as they say um so yeah do pass that on that's that's absolutely fine yeah um so there is certain evidence a certain guidance to take if you're unsure of what to take if they score a two I don't know how I don't know whether they have that on PCS I'm not entirely sure but if you are unsure you can always go onto the Bacon website and that will give you the exact guidance and the most up-to-date guidance which we've got on our system as well about what 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 you should do what steps you should take yeah great sharing direct into your training brilliant Okay, that's good. So you've got the muscle, so I would imagine that's got the guidelines on there. But if it hasn't, you can always Google them on uh, go onto the Vapor website. And they'll let you know. <clears throat> okay. So that sounds like it might be it. So next month, we've actually got a break next month, summer break, August. Um, who knows whether it'll be a heat wave or whether it'll be torrential rain. No one really knows at the moment, do we? Uh, so, but we're off anyway next month. We're having a little break next month. Um, oh, thanks, Katrina. Yes, I will do. Uh, I will. Um, yeah, we're going to have a little break next August. And then, actually, let me I'll stop sharing. Well, I won't stop sharing just in case anyone's got an extra question. But we are going to have a break in August. And then September and October, that's going to be um keep your eye on the website basically www.carebeans.co.uk because it'll it will have news of what's coming up but it's going to be a sort of cyber security one and there'll be a clinical one as well um so just keep your eye on the webinar that'll be september october and then i'll be back in november with i don't know what it'll be yet i'm having a little think um and i'll but it will be on the website in due course so just keep your eye on that you're welcome diane no problem at all Okay, well, it was lovely to see you all. Thanks a lot for coming. Um, and yeah, I hope, I hope you have, enjoy the rest of your summer. I'll see you back in November. Raring to go for Christmas. <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, keep your eye out on the webinar for the other ones coming up. Appreciate it. Palliative, ah, Katrina, noted. Palliative care will be appreciated. Okay, that's always useful to hear which webinars you'd like to see uh, so that's good i can make a note of that and keep that on file um let's just drop that down it's fine lovely all right then folks well thank you enjoy tomorrow well, thank you katrina okay well on that note i'll say goodbye to everyone nice to see you thanks for attending keep your eye out for that the link there'll be a couple of emails i think for the links for the cpd and then one for the resources and etc just keep your eye out for those do do it as soon as you can with that cpd certificate because it's just uh just a bit easier admin wise if you can get those sort of as soon as um lovely all right then everyone i'll stop sharing now and i shall bid you farewell and see you in november take care everyone and see you soon Bye bye